Greetings, Sir and Sirettes, and welcome back to Terror Tech with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to our little base in the middle of the salt flats. Now it's so much cleaner, I don't feel right calling it the Tech Graveyard anymore, although I'm sure it will soon get dirtied up once again. So between the last video and with this one, I've been a little bit busy reading comments, reading forum posts, and all sorts of stuff like like that, in order to get a better grasp towards these lovely scrapping stations. And two things I would quickly like to mention before we get to building our plane, as the title very well may suggest, is that first of all, if we go into the manufacturing of the Venture, we do have access to the mobile delivery cannon. Now this one still works, and you can actually attach it to vehicles and scrap regular resource on the move, which honestly is a really cool idea and at some stage we're going to have to make a mobile Geocorp Mega Harvester which just sells the raw stuff rather than bothering to refine it because sadly no refinery works yet on a mobile tech which is a bit of a shame. I would like a true mobile base. The second thing is that the delivery cannons were actually slowing down all of our lovely scrapping goodness in that you really do need two delivery cannons per refinery and perhaps even two delivery cannons per section with the already refined resources because of how long it takes for the delivery cannons to actually shoot and even then it turns out the Venture mobile delivery cannons for the space provided are actually a little bit more efficient. Of course you do need two of them in the same space but you get the idea. And that's pretty much that, so I will be making a final version of all these in the not so distant future, but for now we have enough money, we can purchase all the stuff we need, let's build ourselves a bomber. Okay then, let's finally get started. So I've just bought myself a load of Hawkeye stuff because of course we are going to be building this mostly out of the Hawkeye components. Not only do they just look really, really cool, they are also incredibly durable. So it certainly makes sense to start off with the regular Hawkeye blocks. So the biggest question I have to answer is how big are we going to build this bomber? Ideally, I want it to be able to hold 16 cruise missiles. I don't know why 16, but that's currently what we have available, so I guess that's the reason. And it just seems like a nice round number for us to aim for. So, that was totally intentional to test out the black hole, because I am smart. How wide is this thing going to be? With the flying blocks, we have the Hawkeye spread wings. So, what I'm thinking is that we have two layers of wings, one on top of the other, and then one additional layer behind that to make it look a little bit more natural. So, the bottom layer, I'm actually going to attach like this maybe two on the side like so, then the next layer is going to be pretty much entirely made out of wings. Now this does mean that the back is going to need some serious lift, otherwise we are going to really, really lift up in terms of pitch. So let's just quickly attach these as well. Maybe thinking we need to be a bit bigger than this, but this will do for now, and then just add the little wing tips. The top one should be a little bit bigger in my opinion, just to make it look a bit cooler, and I think it's actually going to be. Yay! Accidentally doing it as I wanted to, that's always a good thing. Now what we could do actually, to make this a little bit more stable, yeah, this is going to undermine some things we've already done, but that's fine, just break those two off for a second, break this as well I'm afraid. What I would like to do, is add some regular blocks like this, just so we can attach the two layers together. So if we do take damage early on, on the blocks here in the middle, it means everything won't suddenly break apart. There's still an anchoring point with the other wings helping them out. Also, did I place that correctly, both of them being inverted to each other? Yes, I did, because that looks so, so much better. Like that, for instance. There we are, that's good enough. That's completely reasonable. Okay, so now we've got a general idea for the wing size. Let's get to work armoring up the front and getting it ready for the propellers in addition to armoring up the cab a little bit. Now, how do I want to do this? What I think I'll do here is throw that away for a second. Where's the medium? There's the medium. Let's put that there and then that there as well. And then have one more on the 
front, which is the longer version. Okay, that seems reasonable to me. That looks all right. It doesn't look spectacular, but certainly will do for now. And then I would like these two here, because I don't know, I just think that looks kind of cool. Okay, that's good enough for now. And then we move over to the flight blocks, and let's go to the rotofan. It doesn't really matter if that is actually pointing... F actually, no, it does matter if it's pointing forwards, because once you go into the air and it, and it becomes air mode, you won't be able to press backwards and forwards using these rotors. So, one... Th How did I just do that? Oh, okay. Okay. I see how I placed that. So, there and there. That's correct. Yes. Okay. That actually looks pretty darn good, to be honest. That's our front section sorted, at least the very basics of the front section. I kind of want to do this. Does that look too derpy? Yeah, it kind of looks like a stash. Kind of looks like a moustache gone horribly, horribly wrong. We are trying to make ourselves into a villain if we do that. But at the same time, I have a moustache in real life, therefore our craft must have a moustache. No, we just can't. We can't. It looks so stupid. Oh, it looks so stupid. Plus then, if we're going with that logic, I have a stash, therefore it must have a stash, and also have to make it a, have a beard, and that would be far more difficult. So hopefully that's fast enough. What's stuck? Ah, okay, you go away. So now, let's sort out some landing pieces. This shouldn't be too difficult. I'm going to use the bike wheels again. Now, I know they're not the best for this. Trust me, I am fully aware we're not doing the optimal route by doing this. But, I just think the bike wheels look awesome, so that's what we're going to go with. And yes, I can hardly see what's going on either. I think I may have a quick break until it's daytime after this. There we are, the angled We Yes, that's what I wanted. Thank you, game. Like that. Um, we could always just put them straight in the middle before we added the sides, like there. No, I kind of like it like that, but kind of don't. We could... Okay, I have never used these. Okay, let's see. How do these even look? How do? You, how are you meant to place these things? This is the wing wheel. I don't even know how these are meant to actually work. I don't like how... I just don't like how they look at all, so no. You can go away. I'll probably end up scrapping them for money, honestly. That's how much I dislike how those wheels look. Now, I'm sure there's probably ways to make them look amazing in t terms of different styles and such, but... I just... no. Didn't mean to lose that last block. Actually, it would be better if we lost that last block, because then we could go ahead and add ourselves the large fort armor. Not quite what I was intending, but close enough. And I'll flip that round to face upwards, and then we can start building the main body. So, one thing I noticed, which was a little bit annoying, is of course these points underneath the wings are the connection points, and although I would like them connecting to each other, that would mean I couldn't connect anything underneath, which I completely forgot about, you know, the bombs. Now, thankfully and amazingly, we had the perfect amount of space for all 16 of our cruise missiles. Now, this is actually a slight problem. A little bit weirdly, but yes, indeed, it is a problem, because this means all of the cruise missiles are very likely to hit the target at the same time, which may mean all of the explosions happen at the same point, and it doesn't go through the target. Having hit after hit after hit would mean as the blocks get destroyed, the next missile goes in into the wound to open it up and allow the sweet, sweet oil of our enemies to flow onto the ground. Which would be fairly helpful, if slightly grotesque. So I may end up placing some of these further back anyway, but for now, I'm actually really happy how this is turning out, so good for now. Let's continue. I've just added some of these brackets because I think they look absolutely amazing to the sides there. Because I'm also under the impression that they're lighter than the regular blocks. So I think that would make a nice change to just building block after block after block. Now one thing we could do as well is if we remove one of these, which of course will break the entire thing, but oh well, it's the only way to do what I want to do. We could add the smaller fort armor, like so. Now, does that have a connection point to the side? That's the big question here. Can I attach? No. Ah. That's a shame. I would have liked to, to attach these in between. 
because I think that would look pretty cool, but that sadly won't work. But I do want kind of like this spinal look here, so I'm going to continue with that. Maybe. I also may add the extra wing. The overall shape is coming along. I'm not happy with the front just yet, and I'm not quite sure what I'm really doing here between the wings, but at least it looks a little bit more sturdy. I could go really over the top and add loads of extra wings and loads of extra stuff. We could very easily get the money for it, but I don't want this thing to be too over the top. I want it to be still in the normal tech kind of size, and I think that sometimes is actually quite challenging, because all I can think of is, just make this bit bigger, just make that bit bigger, it will look far better, and honestly, probably would, but would also be kind of grotesque in how large we can make it. Let's do that there, and let's do this here, and that, I would say, is the front section pretty much finished. Now we do need some more regular blocks, so I'll go ahead and purchase those, and if we don't have quite enough money for that, we could always scrap our copter for now. We do have the blueprints, so we can always spawn one in again in the future. And honestly, a lot of the parts I need are currently on that copter. So, do I like this so far, though? Crucial question. Do I like this? Actually, yes. It looks a bit busy, but yes, I do like it. The plume wings are definitely the best thing we can use on the back here. They just fit the style very, very naturally, and honestly, they look awesome regardless. And we need one more just to finish that look. Now, I'm fairly certain, currently, this isn't balanced. This in no way is going to be white balanced, but I just want to see if it will take off. So we're going to add these nice and quickly as soon as they enter the black hole. Thank you very much. Add some wheels to the back so it can indeed land, and we're going to see if this thing will even fly. It is very bird-like, and that was the intention, like I said early on, I wanted it to look at least somewhat bird-like, so we can give it a nice generic bird name like many, many aircraft, which we both know and love. So, how am I going to add these wheels? Please say they can fit here and slide under. No, they can't. This may be a little bit irritating to place. How about here? Thank you, thank you. They will be able to go there, that's fantastic. Which means the back wheels are lower than the front wheels, so we should tip forwards naturally. Well, tip upwards at the front. You get what I'm trying to say. It'll be easier to take off. Please, 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 please work. It isn't working. Either not enough lift or not enough speed. I mean, at least it handles normally on the ground. It feels like I'm just using a tank. Yeah, nowhere near enough speed on this thing. So we are far too heavy. I don't think it's actually an issue of lift. I think it is mostly speed. If it is lift, though, it wouldn't be difficult to add some... Come on! No, definitely lift. I mean, definitely speed. Maybe it's both. Maybe it is both. So perhaps an extra layer of wings on the front may be necessary. Hello, goodbye. See, told you they're bombs. Uh, may need to jump into my tank for a second to clear those enemies, and then I will work on getting this thing airborne. Excuse me, tank. Can you please go and deal with those if they're following us? Which they are not. Okay, never mind. You guys can just stay over there. Handling on the ground's pretty easy. Which is nice. Okay, so we've lowered the thrust quite significantly. We've added a lot of extra lift on the front. There is less lift on the back. There are batteries on the inside and a little bit here on the back of the craft and it is completely surrounded by shields. So hopefully it will now be a lot easier to control midair and if we're very lucky, it will also take off a lot easier. I've also lowered the wheels at the front, which I hope isn't going to cause an issue. It's definitely going to be a little bit more difficult to land now with the tail being so low, but it very well may work out for the best. I've also changed the orientation of a couple of the back sections so that they will help us with pitch control rather than just acting like these type of rudders left and right. It'll be lovely if this works. Don't really have too much faith, but it would be lovely, and I think I'm going to wait until day and then go. Dawn has just broke, so let's see if the aircraft is any better, whilst going way too close to some enemies. 
Okay, yes, we are in fact airborne. The aircraft is airborne. We can fly on the aircraft. Already, I am a huge success. And I've just noticed a few things I want to change, but nothing really too important. Either way, seems to be working just fine. I'm a little bit nervous to turn this thing, because honestly, I can't imagine it being particularly quick. So let's just pop up a quest like this one, and let's see if I can go to it. Okay, so here comes the turn. I'm assuming I shouldn't go too sharp. If I go too sharp, I'm probably going to lose air. That actually went pretty well. That was actually very good. Much, much surprise there. Much surprise. Very aircraft. Wow. Yes, it's 2017. People like me are still that unoriginal. Anyway, let's see if we can get over and destroy all of the base guardians. And that was weird. That looked like a non-enemy. Oh, it is a non-enemy. It's one of the quests. It's the um, defend the chest and get the loot, even though we have pretty much everything at this stage, other than the mobile cannon from GSO. That's a very weird enemy. Okay, ignoring the weird enemy, here we come up to the enemy base, so let's see what we can do here. Still a bit nervous about the flyer. So far it's been okay, but even so. Okay, dropping bombs now. Crap. Well, there goes most of the base. <laughs> I thought that was the enemy. I just bombed the base by mistake. Oh, Lord, this is why I could never be in the military. That would be civilian casualties right there. Okay, I'm going to land just for a second. Just going to land. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I was going to say I'm going to land just to mess around with the uh, missiles, but I'd rather not. So let's stay in the air then, put our thrusters back on. Let's just kill the enemies and then land later. So the one problem I do have is the fact that all of the missiles come out at once. I would love them to be staggered, but since staggered fire isn't a thing in this game, what I would like to do is perhaps stagger them around the craft so that they hit at different times. Just because A, I think that would look far more entertaining, and B, I think it would be far more effective as well. We do lose a bit of height. If we turn too sharp, we do lose a fair bit of height, but that's to be expected. Was there an enemy over there that you wanted to kill? I didn't even notice. The missiles had a mind of their own just then. Well, at least we're just flying around killing things, which is always fun. In terms of controls, though, I am actually very, very happy with the plane, surprisingly. Is that the last of the Guardians, or are the other two still Guardians? Yay! All base Guardians are defeated! You can now go and claim that little wreck as your own. How fantastic for us. Honestly, I'm just going to go leave it. Let's try and do another mission. Um, don't really want to do one of the Geocorp ones, because honestly, they take far too long because of how much health things have. Defeat the ambushers really requires us to land. Uh, nothing really much we can do. Oh lord, that has Megaton cannons. No thank you. Please don't hit us. Please don't hit us. Please don't hit us. We're fine. We're okay. We come in peace. Ignore the cruise missiles. We're actually a very, very peaceful craft. Okay, everything's fine. Let's go and do the ambushers one. Maybe if I swoop low enough, it will start to spawn the ambushers, and then we just have to get out of there quickly. Aha! Hello, enemy crate! And hello, things already near the crate. Well, that's pretty annoying. Once again, the missile's going after the smallest possible enemy. Not really the best, considering I didn't even see a gun on that particular enemy. I think this is a bit too sharp. Yeah, that's far too sharp. If we turn like that, we're going to lose so much height. Okay, three out of five of the invaders have been defeated. And that random. I'm very sorry. Welcome to the world and instantly cruise missile to the face. I'm assuming that they are the last invaders, or at least this is one of the invaders. No, it wasn't. Then where have the other invaders gone? I must have spawned them in ages ago and they've just wandered away. That's pretty sad. Don't crash into the trees. Yeah, need to learn moderation when it comes to turning. At some stage, we're going to crash into the ground doing that. 
Okay, can I please get a mission which I can actually find enemies to fight? We've got hostiles, destroy the tech group, and of course it's in the other sodding direction. Why can nothing just be in the direction I think it's going to be in? Is that so wrong? Oh no, it's not these guys, is it? Oh, but they are just like spam megaton cannons, I don't want to face that. Even as a flyer, this is annoying. Okay, let's just make sure to go past these two. This one with all the cannons and fire. Okay, we took out a couple of cannons and damaged a few blocks, but that's about it. So, let's try another attack run to see if we can do anything. The controls are actually surprisingly... Wow, did I actually kill it? That first volley actually killed the enemy. I didn't realise it. We must have hit the cab directly. That was weird. No complaints, though. But like I was about to say, the actual controls are bizarre when it comes to flyers, in my opinion, at least, in this game. I think it's more the transition from ground to flying. It's very weird, and you just don't get used to it. And yes, I know I used the word weird to describe it twice, because that's just how weird it actually is. Way too sharp. I'm learning though slowly. Did that kill it? Enemies destroyed, mission complete. Let's see if you can land this thing. Probably not though, because this thing will not glide. It's too heavy to glide, so... Trying to turn off the thrusters, the propellers, whatever you want to call them, the turbines. Oh, almost a perfect landing, just clipping the back there. I think the back is a little bit too low. It's going to be very difficult to land this without doing that. So, for our first proper plane, I think we did pretty well. I've already noticed a few things I need to change, and I'll do that off camera. I'm actually going to take it over into the R&D mode, the research and development mode, which is essentially this game's version of the sandbox mode. You have unlimited parts, it's all nice and safe, and it's easy to test out what you want to test out. So if you have any suggestions for a name for this craft, then please feel free to leave it in the comments below. And with that, I'm afraid I am actually all out of time for today's video. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that TerraTech is a series you would like to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. In the next episode... I actually have no idea. We'll be doing something, it will most likely involve missiles.